an all-new 9 JKL, Monday at 9.30 on KPIX 5. Rookie Jordan Bell put the exclamation point on the Warriors' sixth straight win last night. That's not Bell's only highlight this weekend. He tweeted, Mom is in town. Don't know if I'm more excited about her being here or her cooking gumbo. Either way, I'm very excited. And alongside is the son of uh, Carolyn Gray, the guy who eats all the gumbo. Is that a recipe that good? It's very good, yeah. It's, uh, it's on a crack in it or something. I want to show the audience when Jordan Bell found out he was Warrior. It looks like you might be going to Chicago. But you end up being a Golden State Warrior playing for the NBA champions. Sum up the, how the year has been for you. Um, yeah, the year has been really great. Uh, I mean, a lot of ups and downs, making to the Final Four, then losing to North Carolina. Um, but then finding out you're playing for the uh, defending world champs. Uh, so it was a great feeling. Take me to the uh, NCAA tournament before we get to the Warriors, because the game against Kansas, mm. the one in you had eight blocks, yeah. that's not against San Francisco State. I mean, that <laughs> that's against Kansas. Mm. What do you remember about that game? Uh, I remember going in, I was really scared, you know, they have the number one seed mm -hmm. in the Midwest uh, bracket. Um, so I'm just going in like, like this is probably the first time I'm actually like doubting myself. Like, damn, do I like? Oh, really? Yeah, because like they, they, they're like they're they're supposed to be a three point shooting team, and I'm like, you know, I can't really affect the game like that. I got block right. shots. Yeah. Um, so the game plan was for us was just to make them drive as much as possible. Um, first play of the game, I get a block, and I was like. We might, we might win this game, yeah. At what point did you start counting your blocks? <laughs> I didn't, I, ne I never count my blocks. I don't keep up with stats like that. I had to try to just play hard. Um, but you must have looked at, oh, oh my God. Nah, I so they only, have, they only have points, rebounds, and assists up there. Um, only way you can know is like, you have the stat sheet. Mm -hmm. And my uh, teammate, Chris Boucher, came to me. He's like, yo, you have six. I was like, oh, why'd you tell me? Now nah, I'm gonna stop blocking shots. I'm like, thinking about it too much. No, you added two more. Yeah, I had two more, but I was, he was like, he was like, oh, and I got to eight. He was like, two more, you can get a triple double, triple double. I'm yeah. like, stop telling me that. Like, let's yeah. focus on this game. And then, and then, social, social media kind of goes crazy mm -hmm. with a thing called things Jordan Bell could block. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let, let me, let's just show a few, and it's still going, yeah, by the way. Yeah. So, what's your reaction when you when you started seeing this? Um, at first, you know, I thought it was pretty cool, like somebody, some kind of Oregon fan made this about me. Um, but then I started seeing it all over social media, people retweeting it. It's a um, wedding bouquet. You're yeah. blocking a wedding bouquet. <laughs> and the way needs one of those. <laughs> um, so I see it on social media, people talking about it all the time. Um, reporters asking me about it, and like, I'm like, it's really a big thing like that. Um, and then the whole account like blows up, a whole bunch of followers. Um, so I thought it was pretty cool. Yeah. There's a yeah, block yeah. in the <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> You get a connection with uh, the, the President Trump. And then here's the locally, here's the one I really like. Which one? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've seen that one, yeah. The catch for Dwight Clark. So you're 14 games in uh, now to mm -hmm. your a NBA career. Mm -hmm. um, you get uh, average about, about nine minutes a game. What's mm -hmm. the experience been like? Oh, uh, it's been great. Um, me being a rookie, stepping into going from college to NBA, um, it's a totally different basketball game. The pace is much faster. People are bigger, stronger, just as athletic as you. Everybody can shoot, so you really have to sp uh, spread the floor out. Um, but I think the one thing that's probably stood out to me most is like how much free time you have as mm -hmm. the NBA player. Like you're in the gym, practice, let's say from 8.30, you're gonna finish about one or two. You have from three o'clock till the rest of the day just yeah. to do whatever. So. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Uh. A little bit of both. Uh, good, because I don't have school anymore. I don't have to worry about <laughs> going to class or anything like that. But it's bad because, like, you know, you, you have to try to find something to occupy your mm -hmm. time. So um, try to find hobbies, uh, charity, something to do just to keep you uh, going. What's, what's your favorite thing to do off the court? Um, watch TV, mm -hmm. play with my dog. Um, I'm trying to get into, like, learn how to play the piano. Oh, really? That's something I always wanted to do. So on my free time, I think it's something. Oh, uh, that's a great yeah. hobby. Okay, so... Um, it turns out the Warriors actually have two defensive players of the year. Obviously, Dray uh, Draymond Green, the reigning NBA player of the year, but you're the, the Pac-12 mm -hmm. defensive player of the year. But then, uh, Jordan, you look at Klay Thompson's yeah. defense, Andre Iguodala's uh, defense, uh, KD's defense. Mm -hmm. So this, you're surrounded by great defensive yeah. players like yourself. What do you learn from each of them? What kind of, what elements of their game 
can you incorporate or do you need to do that at all? Oh uh, yeah, I definitely need to get better as a defender. Um, but I think they all bring different things to the table. Like Andre, he's really good with his hands, he's getting steals, uh, reading people's uh, moves. Draymond, he's like really a student of like the defensive game. Like he studies people's moves. He watches film on them. Like we, last game we played uh, Philadelphia and he was telling me like, yeah, I watched like an hour of film on Ben Simmons yesterday. And I was like, that's crazy. Like I never did that before. Like usually I, watch, I might watch a couple highlights every, here and there, but like he watched like an hour full on one person. I'm like, that's crazy. That work ethic, let's say you ended up with another team mm -hmm. and maybe got more minutes, right? Maybe we're averaging 15 minutes mm -hmm. a, a game. Um, but there is a plus side there, mm -hmm. but you're with guys that you're actually learning a lot from who've been there, done that, mm -hmm. won an NBA champion. What, what do you th see is the value of that? Um, yeah, like people keep saying that to me all the time, like, oh, you can be on the team playing a lot, but I'm like, yeah, that's true, but I wouldn't have the great veterans that I have on this side of being on the words. Like I have Zaza, who teaches me a lot, JaVel, David West, Draymond, Defense Player of the Year, Andre Iguodala, Finals MVP. KD, who's a monster, Steph, Clay, I have all these guys who like have great accomplishments in the NBA. Um, so, I mean, it could be better um, playing more minutes, but I mean, I'd rather be where I'm at, just learning from all those guys. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we know your reputation mm -hmm. as a defensive player, but obviously, you showcase some offensive skills. Mm -hmm. The, particularly the play that set off the yeah. controversial <laughs> storm, yeah. the dunk against Dallas, you threw it against the backboard mm -hmm. in garbage time. Was that pre-planned? Uh, I mean, I always have a plan, like, to myself, like, oh, what kind of dunk am I going to do if I get a fast break? Um, so I planned on win like, getting the windmill, but um, the defender was running next to me, so when I caught it, I, like, I seen him, and I was like, there's no way I can windmill. I was like, I'm just throw it off the backboard. So I just threw it up, and then just caught it. Did you take the KD's reaction? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, that, was probably, that was probably the best thing of the, uh, the dunk was people's reaction, yeah. like him, Steph's, uh, Draymond, like running off the court and all that. What did Steve say to you, Kerr? Um, I mean, he told me just to be prepared that other people aren't going to um, like that I'm doing stuff like that, but also that it's basketball, you should have fun, mm -hmm. so... You were definitely having fun. Yeah, definitely. I, w I wasn't trying to be disrespectful in <laughs> yeah. any kind of way to the Dallas Mavericks. I was just having yeah. fun. Yeah. Mom, what did you think? <laughs> <laughs> Carolyn's she in the studio. Uh, what uh, goals do you have, uh, set yourself for the rest of the season? Um, I don't set like statistical goals, like as far as like averaging this many points, rebounds, assists, or anything like that. I try to just go and just play my hardest and just make sure I'm making some kind of um, positive impact on the team. I think you said you didn't like doing interviews. I don't. <laughs> you were really good. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Terrific. Yeah. Hey, no gumbo tonight, but House of Prime Rib. Maybe both. How's that? Maybe both. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe both. Uh, hey, uh, thanks for coming in, yeah, man. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Good thank to meet you. you in person. Yep. Okay. We'll be back with more on game day in just a moment. Promotional consideration provided by the House of Prime Rib a San Francisco institution since 1949. Nobody does prime rib like the House of Prime Rib. USDA prime beef aged for 21 days before it's cooked and served at your table in a prime rib cart. The House of Prime Rib, often imitated, never duplicated. The address is yours. The experience is Alain Fennell. Hi, I'm Joan London. Join me in the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention for our series.